start the video. Maybe uh, yeah. you can talk on that and we can have a conversation around that. Let's see here. So the paths of the mountain all suppose there is a mountain, but clearly there is no mountain. So this idea of experience and individual experience, of course experience necessarily means there's an experiencer, there's a subject and an object, and then the experience itself is necessarily filtered through the senses and the past experience and the memory of the experiencer and the conditions of the experiencer, infinite conditions. So every experience will always be different. There's no such thing as one, a same experience that can be experienced by some abstraction of a subject or an object or something like this. So even if in this case we're talking that the object of experience is the self or is this beyond, right? So already we're using, we're applying this dualistic experience to that which lies beyond experience. So when we get these glimpses, or you mentioned the peak experiences, we have these, these um, <clears throat> bursts or blasts from beyond that come. For me, the spiritual realization or the, the depth of our spirituality is not in the peak experiences, but through the whole process. The, the, the burning frustration and this uh, longing and this lostness, all of this is equally as important as the peaks in the integration and awakening, uh, which is really just uh, coming back to this natural state of being. It's not some grandiose, like, um, like uh, putting your flag at the top of the mountain kind of thing and someone's waiting up there to give you a trophy and assign it and to take a picture and verify and all of this kind of thing. This is still immature uh, practice, it's with some goal, some goal somewhere else. Also this question, is, when we reach there, is it the same place? Where is this there? This there is only a concept, a construct. So the realization or this enlightenment or awakening is always here. Every moment it's a continual blossoming in the here. So there can't be any kind of fixed rule or formula as to how that will be expressed or experienced. Both expression and experiencing are subject to the conditions of the individual instrument and the limitations of, again, the past, the language, training, and, and much more. So the expression of that and the experiencing and then the story or whatever way we have of understanding our experience, which again is, <clears throat> is um, unimportant. There's too much importance on the individual. The realization is when the individual, when the drop dissolves back into the ocean, or the entire ocean's experience is the drop. But this realization, even this, it's not a building up, of course, of the I or the self through some new practices or new costumes or new habits or like this, but it's a total, it's a total transparency. It's when it totally dissolves back into the fabric of being without needing to put any fence around any kind of past or object or space or time or identification. But this this itself is just the beginning of the journey, actually. Chogyam Changpa calls it basic sanity. Enlightenment is basic sanity. Awakening is the very first part in this... <clears throat> in these many stages these of, of maturation or evolution or, or like this. Hmm. So even <clears throat> what we're referring to, like for example, when we're talking about this awakening and I can say like 
Uh, after I was initiated in 2010, I started having these glimpses of samadhi that became more regular. And then for a period of many years, I had this electricity and continuous visions and illness in the body. And the body would become very weak and I'd become disidentified and go into these states of realization and connection. And many of these kinds of experiences continuously for years. And then later times, even after, and when it became more stabilized, I was living in the communities with teachers, you know, one experience where it, it was like the energy goes up the spine little by little, like spiders crawling, and then it, it's like cracking at the top of the skull, and then it, it bursts open and the light bursts through, and it is all in that light for, you know, some hours, and then for days, it's not that no one can touch the body or come near, near the body and no interest or identification. So experiences like this too, <clears throat> but these, the, 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 the question is the integration of these into a stable, ordinary consciousness. It's not, the, these are just kind of side effects of the process that's undergoing and that stabilizes over time. And it took a good six to ten years even to just to, for that to become no big deal you know for for it to be for that which is to be just as it is without getting in the way with any kind of concepts or past or anything like this this is uh something that uh, you're actually getting right to the the point of it and and that's awesome but um i think the sounds is going to really interfere. Mm, <laughs> Do you yes. want to just meditate for a few more minutes? <laughs> we can wait until they, they finish. Yeah, that's annoying. Eh? I can it's, just tell them to stop.